Hi there, this is Lee, and I'm talking about Jill Stein and the Green Party and the popular vote. Jill Stein has explained in detail what 5% of the popular vote will do for the Green Party. And so I've gone to the Federal Elections Commission website um, just to see what the hard line is there. And I see something interesting. <laughs> So what Jill Stein says about 5% of the vote is accurate. Um, there will be funding for the Green Party with 5% of the total national popular vote. Um, and also minor party status, uh, things like that, things that will give a boost to the Green Party. Um, but then this Federal Election Commission also details what happens when a party such as the Green Party gets 5 to 25 percent of the vote. And so I'm just going to reveal that. Um, some people already know. But first, a 5 percent. It says that, um, okay. New party candidates, nominees of parties that are neither major parties nor minor parties, may receive public funds after the election if they receive 5% or more of the vote. The amount is based on the ratio of the new party candidate's vote to the average vote of the two major party candidates in that election. Uh, but it does go on. Minor party candidates and new party candidates may qualify for partial general election funding based on their party's electoral performance. Minor party candidates, nominees of parties whose presidential candidates receive between 5 and 25 percent of the vote in the preceding election, may receive public funds based on the ratio of their party's votes in the preceding presidential election to the average of the two major parties' candidates in that election. So my interpretation is 5 percent is the baseline to receive uh, public funding uh, for the next election, but 5 to 25 percent means additional funding based upon the ratio to the major party candidates. And so if I'm reading that correctly, 5 to 25 gets you more. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that, you know, the Green Party is meeting the baseline. But what we don't know is what the undersampling of Greens and third party and independent voters that have been not included in um, national polling, it's possible that the 5 to 25 baseline is being met. And for all we know, <laughs> it might be higher than that. So 5% gets the baseline, 5 to 25 gets you more. More than 25, hey, that might get you the White House and turn it into a greenhouse. Um, something to consider. Um, high expectations. We can reach for the uh, moon, perhaps reach the stars, reach for the stars, perhaps reach for the moon. But I think that we might be pleasantly surprised um, this election season. Um, there's been so much work, time, money, energy, media. Um, that has been um, awarded to the Green Party um, more than any previous um, election cycle. Um, I think it's even exceeded what Ralph Nader received. And so this is wonderful um, that uh, the Green Party may not split the vote, that it might actually flip the vote and make the White House into a greenhouse. We don't know because the polling has uh, been Skewed. WikiLeaks has shown us that there has been dedication to the concept of oversampling for favorable uh, public relations perception um, of a false strength um, given to uh, likely the Democratic Party. So, you know, we don't, we don't know what's really going to happen on November 8th and what things are, how things are going to play out. But I think there might be unexpected surprises. And I think um, those of us who were Sanders supporters know how things can go off track if there is not vigilance. And the great thing about this being the general election as opposed to the primary election 
is that there is interest by competing parties to call out rigging and fraud when and where it may or may not occur. Whereas it was overlooked and silenced and suppressed during the primary, during the general election, um, there is vigilance by multiple political parties who are competing against each other and have a, a stake in maintaining election integrity. And so I think it's good to remain hopeful, uh, reach for the moon, maybe reach the stars or reach for the stars and reach the moon, whichever comes first. <laughs> good luck.